Today's lesson is 8.3. We're going to be talking about solving right triangles. All right, so all chapter we've been talking about right triangles and looking at right triangles and getting the ratio of the sides using trig. So today we're going to take it one step further and we're going to use inverse trigonometric functions. So we saw a little bit of this on the sine, cosine, and tangent worksheets, but basically it's just the backwards of the sine, cosine, and tangent. So if you can say that the sine of A is equal to X, then the inverse sine of X is going to equal the measure of that angle, measure of angle A. Okay. So if you're just taking the sine of an angle, you're going to get a decimal. It's going to give you the ratio of those sides. But if you turn it around and you take the inverse of those uh, of that side, it's going to tell you that angle measure. All right. Same thing is going to be true for the cosine and the tangent. So the cosine of A is going to be equal to X. Therefore, the inverse of the cosine of X is going to be equal to the measure of angle B. Same thing for the tangent. When the tangent of A is equal to the ratio, then the tangent inverse is going to equal, oops, I wrote B, that should be A, It's going to equal that measure of A. <coughs> and so how do you know which one to use when? Okay, you're going to use regular trig, meaning sine, cosine, and tangent, just the regular buttons, when you are solving for a side. Then you're going to use inverse trig when you're solving for an <coughs> angle. Okay? So that's the difference between the two. If you're trying to get the length of the side, use regular trig. If you're trying to get the length or the measure of an angle, you're going to use inverse trig. So here is what it looks like in an actual problem. So example number one. We're going to solve to the nearest degree. Okay, nearest degree is going to be a whole number. Because some of times it will give you the answer with a decimal. But when you're solving this way, you're going to round it up to the nearest whole number, like 16 or 25 or 87. Okay. It's going to be a whole number. It's not going to be 16.732. It's just going to be 16. Okay? So let's try it with three little examples. So we'll call this little letter A. We're going to take the inverse function of sine of 0 0.85. And I'm going to show you how to do it on your calculator. All right? When it has that little negative one up there, kind of like an exponent, you need to hit the second button first on your calculator. Uh, if you're using this calculator, it's going to display the little second down in the corner. Then you're going to hit sign. Make sure it displays the inverse up there. It doesn't just say sign. Okay? Then you're either going to get a fraction right here, or they're going to give you a decimal, because fractions and decimals are the same. So whether they give you a decimal or whether they give you the fraction, just type it in. So in this case, it's 0 0.85. Hit the equal sign. And your calculator is going to display this big, long thing, 58.2116693. For this first example, I want you to write that all down. 
so that when you come back later and you look at it, you go, oh, I don't have to do all of that, but my calculator is going to show all that. We just need to round to the nearest degree. So in front of that decimal is 58. We look at the number after the decimal to decide if we stay or round up. So it's either going to stay 58 or it's going to round up to 59. The number right here is a 2, so is it going to stay or round up? Stay. And so that we, we say the inverse sine of 0 0.85 is going to be approximately 58 degrees. All right, let's try it with cosine. So we're going to do the inverse cosine of 0 0.87. So make sure you hit the second, the cosine button, type in the decimal that they give you, hit the equal sign, <coughs> and then look at the calculator display. It says 29.54 and all these numbers after it, right? The only one that's important is in front of that decimal, which right now is a 29. So it's either going to stay 29 or it's going to round up to 30. So right after that decimal point is a 5. So this one, is it going to stay or round up? This one's going to round up. And so we're going to say that it is approximately 30 degrees. Right. Let's try one more for tangent. So we're going to do inverse tan of 0 0.71. Hit the second button, the tangent button, type in the decimal that they give you, close the parentheses, hit equals. This time we've got 35.3 and then a bunch of other numbers. So it's either going to stay 35 or it's going to round up to 36. So you look to the number after the decimal, which is a 3. So stay or round up? Stay. stay. So this is going to be approximately 35 degrees. <coughs> Any questions on example number one there? Those three, those three are really all the same thing. It's just you could get a question that will ask you the sine, or you could get a question that would ask you the cosine, or you could get one that would ask you tangent. You should be able to do all three, okay? All right, so the next thing we're going to talk about is solving for a right triangle. Okay, so you're going to see questions or problems that are going to say, solve this triangle. And then it's going to give you some information and leave some information off. Okay, so you need to know, going into it, what do you want? Okay, we've been talking about triangles for a long time. We know that triangles have six important parts, right? Three of one thing and three of, the, of another thing. Three of what? Triangles, they're called tri. They have three what? Angles. Angles. So you need to know all three angles. So if it only gives you one, you need to get the other two. Or if it gives you two, you need to get the third one. Okay. And you need to know all three what? Sides. So if it only gives you one side, you need to get two more sides. Or if it gives you two sides, you need to get one more side. Okay? So when it says solve it, it means that when you're done, you're going to know all three angles and all three sides. So six things. Okay? Six, six parts. Okay, so you should be able to count it. Some of them are going to be given to you because you can't, I mean, you can't, they can't give you a blank one and say, what is this triangle? You know, they got to give you some information. So some of it's going to be given to you. You need to solve the rest, okay? So in order for you to solve, you're going to need a minimum 
of some information, right? So today, I'm going to show you either how to, how to completely solve when you're given two side lengths. Or if you're given one side length and one angle. <coughs> but you actually also already know another piece of information because these are right triangles, right? So you already know that the triangle has what? A 90 degree angle. So you already know one angle, and then you're going to be given two side lengths, so that's three things. So out of six, you already know half of it, right? Or you're already going to know that it has a 90, one side length and one angle. So again, three things, and you need to get the other three things, okay? So at this point, you're going to use everything that you've learned in geometry, right? Move this up to see it right there. So here is what you can use. So in geometry so far, you've learned this little theorem called the Pythagorean theorem. Because it's a right triangle, if, if it's necessary, you can use the Pythagorean theorem, okay? You've also learned about the altitude, altitude. which we learned in 8.1, okay? When you take a right triangle, you draw in the altitude. That altitude squared is equal to the two pieces of the hypotenuse. Multiply them together, take the square root, okay? You can use that if you need to. Third thing, if it's a special right triangle, if it's a 30, 60, 90, it's going to have a special relationship. Or if it's a 45, 45, 90, also the sides are going to have a special relationship. And then the fourth thing, that we just learned is trigonometry. Okay, so we have four tools in our belt that we can use if we need to. Are you going to use all four on every triangle? No. Might you use one or two? Sure. Or you might just use one on one part and one on another. All right. So example number two, 